welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming an anti-haul. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Actually, I don't know if I've ever done an anti-haul. I think I have, but I kind of switched over to Will I Buy It videos because I felt like I was really so interested in a lot of the makeup, it didn't really make sense for me to do anti-hauls. But now that I'm on like a no-buy, low-buy situation, if you haven't seen my video on that, I will try and remember to link it up in the cards. But basically, I'm on a low-buy, no-buy for the month of January and February, and it's technically a year-long no-buy, low-buy, but I told myself I'm gonna like evaluate every two months to give myself breathing room in case I need to take a break or anything like that. I kind of want to build that into my situation so I don't like overwhelm myself and freak out and buy everything because that can happen too sometimes. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, since there are so many new makeup releases coming out, I kind of wanted to sit down and talk about some new products and kind of just anti-haul them, roast them a little bit, but don't take this too seriously. Just know that I'm coming from a place where I need to slow down, and so I need to talk myself out of some of this stuff. If you're interested in any of this stuff, oh my gosh, good for you. Like, if you have the finances to accumulate makeup, like, I'm not here to judge you guys. So anyway, the first thing I want to talk about are the new ColourPop Blush Crush and Nude Mood Palettes. Now they launched these I think last week and I believe they retail for $12. And I think these are really cute palettes. I honestly secretly kind of want them, but I know I don't need them because I have, just within my ColourPop collection, I have the Coconut Palette, I have the Brown Sugar Palette, I have the California Love Palette. I have so many of their eyeshadow palettes that have those nude shades and those rosy tones. The blush one immediately reminded me of the Huda Beauty Nude Palette. What is it called? The pinky one. And the brown one reminded me of my Biba Palette. Like, I have so many palettes exactly like those two and even though they're such a great price point I decided that for me it was better to just admire them from afar and Colourpop is honestly on my like no buy list and I'm gonna try and just not purchase from them all of 2020 um just because I feel like I'm so overwhelmed with the amount of Colourpop I buy I feel like you know every $30 every couple of weeks ends up adding up even though it doesn't seem like it so let me just confess to you guys like a really bad habit of mine is that I would just place like a $30 to $35 order on Colourpop every week just to hit free shipping and pick things up and even though a lot of their eyeshadow palettes are amazing I just never got to them in time or it was too late to review them or I had something way more fun come in that I wanted to play with so they always got pushed to the back burner I mean off the top of my head I can tell you right now I have like the So Jaded palette that you guys have never seen on my channel. The California Love palette has never been swatched. I have so many ColourPop palettes. So it's really quite an issue for me. And that's okay. I'm not a, like ashamed to admit it. Everyone has their personal journey that they're on with ColourPop. And I can just admire it and move on. That's what I that's where I want to be in life. And if there's something like so spectacular that I can't live without it. I can pick it up in March if I want to, if I decide to change my rules on my no buy for ColourPop, but for right now, I am so happy to see such beautiful palettes come out and move on with my life. So the same goes for the Mint To Be palette, I know that's in here somewhere, that one, the yeah, the Mint To Be palette, that one was really hard to resist because it's just such a cute palette and you guys know I love green, like look at my green eyeshadow today, you know, um, but I had to say no because... I, I would just never get to it. I have the ColourPop Lilac palette. Have you guys seen it on my channel? No. I did do a swatch video with it, but that was it. I haven't used it on my eyes. So even though I like greens more than I like purples, too bad, so sad. I'm not gonna buy it just, you know, just to keep collecting. Um, so we're gonna change that this year for me. And so both of those palettes, actually all three of those palettes are anti-hauled by me. <laughs> so the next one is the Morphe 35i called the Icy Fantasy palette. This palette is $25. Again, this one 
is a beautiful palette. I think it's so fun that Morphe decided to play with pastels. Like, it's a very new avenue for them. And the fact that they actually did 35 shades that aren't like 100% dupes of each other, I think is fantastic. Great price point. I did see it on the Ulta website as well. It definitely did tempt me. But the thing with me is I can't really get pastels to work on my skin tone. I know there's a lot of women out there that are my skin tone, that are darker than me, that can do beautiful looks with pastel shades. But unfortunately, the makeup gods have not bestowed that talent upon me. And I just need to like make peace with that. I recently bought the Sugar Pill, the little palette. It was out of stock forever and then it came in stock on Ulta's website. I haven't even used it yet. Again, it's just sitting in my collection, waiting to be used. So I don't need to buy the Morphe palette. I'm actually contemplating not using the Sugar Pill palette and just taking it back because I really don't think it's gonna show up on me, but it got so many good reviews that it like really tempted me. So I did end up picking it up before my low buy, no buy year started, um, but yeah. I'm not gonna get the Morphe palette and I'm anti-hauling it. Okay, so the BH Cosmetics Travel Series, this one, ooh, it's tempting me, but get this. So BH Cosmetics is another culprit in my 2020 list. Like they are on my no buy list, which basically means I'm not planning on purchasing anything from BH Cosmetics this year. And the reason I did that is because I bought so many palettes from BH Cosmetics I wanted their glowing in grease. Where is that palette? Let me just, it's always better when I provide examples. So let me see, maybe I put it away. I have the VH Cosmetics, I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. Okay, so my story is, I wanted the glowing in grease palette when it came out. And I really liked the colorful palette that also came out in that set. And the day it launched, I got on the BH website, I got overly excited and I bought the wrong set. So I bought the original set that had like a London, Bali, I think, I don't remember. I'll try and remember to put pictures so you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I bought the wrong set of palettes and then I was so bummed because I didn't like really the two eyeshadow palettes that came in that set because they were really neutral. I think I have them somewhere. I'm going to put them in a giveaway eventually <laughs> on my channel. I didn't get the right ones, so then I moved on with my life. And then the right ones went on sale at Ulta, so I picked up the colorful palette as well as Glowing in Grease. And now they did the new travel series, so they did Trendy in Tokyo, Illuminating in Ireland, and Smitten in Switzerland. And I feel like personally attacked by BH Cosmetics because Trendy in Tokyo is so fun. It's like this fun, colorful rainbow palette and it looks so attractive and Trend Mood did these swatches that made it look so pigmented and fun and colorful and I just like, my immediate instinct was to want it and I want it so bad and they're only $16. But the thing is, I have so many colorful palettes and I have so many BH Cosmetics palettes and I feel like if I give myself an inch, I'm gonna take a mile and then I'm just gonna go down the same BH Cosmetics rabbit hole that I did last year. So I'm gonna stay strong, but I do think Trendy in Tokyo is really cute. So if you guys have tried it, let me know in the comments because I'm expecting the formula to be okay, but it's not anything I can't live without. Illuminating in Ireland is not calling to me, thankfully, because it's all highlighters and I am so good on the highlighters right now. Smitten in Switzerland has a beautiful grungy matte green as well as a grungy green shimmer. So even Switzerland is calling to me, which would regularly be just like a boring palette for you and I, but no, even that one's cute. So very, very tempted, but I'm not gonna do it because I am not buying BH Cosmetics this year. That is like a huge goal for me. If I can get through this year without buying ColourPop or BH, I will be so proud of myself. So the next palettes I'm gonna anti-haul are two palettes by Violet Voss. And again, I did dabble in Violet Voss a little bit in 2019. Nothing really stuck though. Um, they've been doing a lot of cute little mini palettes, which I think is a really good way for them to kind of compete in this like really oversaturated market. Even my little Sephora Inside JCPenney is carrying them in like the little 
gondolas on the way to the checkout, which I think is a really great place to put them because they're affordable. They're doing a lot of like different color stories, like very good stuff from Violet Voss, I think personally. So they just came out with a palette called Matte Vibes for $30, which I think is probably the size of like those big rainbow palettes they've been coming out with in 2019. I do not need any of those shades. I'm actually not even tempted by this palette, to be very honest with you guys. But, I mean, I have to anti-haul something, so it is getting anti-hauled. And then the Sweet Violet palette was really cute, but then I thought of all of the Violet palettes that I had recently picked up and told myself, like, listen, you have no business buying any more purple palettes. So this is the Juvia's Place Violet palette, which I really like, and then this is the... Um, Menagerie Violet Ink Palette that I haven't tried out yet and I love that they're small and I also have the Lilac Palette from Colourpop so I don't need any violet purple anytime soon so definitely anti-hauling that. I did see my friend Amy did pick it up so I'm excited for her video and I can like live vicariously through other people for a change. The next thing I'm anti-hauling is the KKW Celestial Skies Eyeshadow Collection Trio Nonsense. So again, I think KKW is not on my no buy list for 2020, but after that Mario palette, the second one, I feel like I should put her on my no buy list because I bought the whole Mario collection and I was not a fan of that palette. I have it in my pile. I just need to list it on Poshmark. I haven't done that yet. Um, and I'm just being so critical of my eyeshadow collection right now, guys. I just foresee like huge declutters. I've already listed stuff like eyeshadow palettes on there. And what I want to do is, if you guys are familiar with my eyeshadow palettes and how I store my makeup, I have a bookshelf right there. And right now I have three shelves of palettes and what I want to do is reorganize it. I'm going to group them by brand and then I'm just going to take out all the palettes that don't speak to me. Like I'm going to Marie Kondo the shit out of my eyeshadow palette collection this year and I'm so excited. Um, somebody did ask me in my low buy video, I had said I'm going to try every single palette that I have. And that was kind of a misprint. Let's call it a misprint. I didn't mean every palette I have. I'm gonna try definitely the ones that don't speak to me anymore and like have a little reckoning. You know how Hannah Louise Poston says like, she has like a makeup reckoning. That's kind of what I've been doing. Even, you know, at the end of last year, I was like, when I had time off from work, I was like, do I want this? Do I love this? I'm never gonna use this. Like, move it on, move it on. Like to me, I don't like to hoard makeup. I love to buy it, but I'm not like this huge collector, like I don't need to keep every eyeshadow palette that I've ever owned just for the sake of keeping it. I feel really good about getting rid of things. Throughout my whole house I do because that's how my mom raised me. She was always going through her stuff and always going through my stuff. She never let me just keep junk and like accumulate stuff as a kid and that's definitely passed on to me, which is honestly like a life skill I'm realizing because like I've never seen cars like this back home, like where I was growing up, but do you know how like sometimes you walk, like buy a car in a parking lot and it's like full of trash? Like the back seat is like full of trash. I'm not saying like a couple of boxes or some laundry, like I get it. Like I'm not gonna say like my car is clean, but you see people that literally have trash in their cars. I've seen cars like that multiple times. Trust me, I've never seen that in Sri Lanka. And I'm gonna sound like such an immigrant or such a foreigner right now, but seeing cars full of trash is like such a weird concept to me because that is not how I was raised. So honestly, like my mom, she was so good at like always telling me like, don't hold on to things. The more you give, the more you receive, like, all of those things that she ingrained in me, I truly appreciate because now as an adult, I see like people's struggles with stuff and like getting rid of stuff. So don't be scared to get rid of things. They're just things. You always have more room to like get something else if you really need it. So that's like my life advice for you. But oh my gosh, I just went on a freaking tangent. Back to KKW, I just feel like I'm kind of on a break with KKW. I know she is just gonna keep like churning out these like sort of semi-boring palettes and 
I justified the bigger palettes, like the 10 pans for a while now. And like I said, after that second Mario palette, I'm kind of like, mm, I'm good. And I like the concept here. There's a trio for $70. And then she's got Sepia Sunset, Bronze Heaven, Night Sky. And those are all 25 bucks a piece. Honestly, these ones look even more color pop than before. I know that it's, it's like confirmed that they are made in the same factory as color pop. And so I'm like, uh, you might as well get like, you get a really nice ColourPop palette for 25 bucks. And the face um, palettes definitely remind me of ColourPop because you guys remember before ColourPop came out with like their single pan system, they did those, like their blushes were in square pan little sets. And those were like the first things they came out with, like that Alexis Ren collection where she did like a bronzer highlighter duo. I um, used to love that and the, these products definitely remind me of like ColourPop in its infancy when it just started doing pressed powders so try and remember that and rein it in <laughs> because you might just be buying overpriced ColourPop like that's the tea. <laughs> Anyway, the next palette I'm anti-hauling is the Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette, the part two. She's coming out with a new one. This is so hard for me, you guys, because I have such a love-hate relationship with Dominique Cosmetics. I talked about this in a video. I think it was my Will I Buy It video where I kind of talked about the palette. And I was like, oh, I really want the Trend Mood box so I can get the palette. And then the eyeshadow brushes, like those were the two things I really wanted. And just the value there, I would have recouped with those two products because I wanted. But that's how my sick brain works. Like, I want to buy it just to review it for you guys. And honestly, by the time it comes, like, I would have, like, a hundred other palettes to play with. Like, that's how bad it is for me um, with my palette purchases. So that's why I need to anti-haul this. The other thing is, like, I really like her latte palette and I really liked her lemonade palette. But once she did the berries and cream, like, it really threw me off because, first of all, the palette was a different size, which, whatever, I coped and I bought it, but I didn't love the formula of that one. And then I bought the Rustic Glam, and the same thing happened. Like, the shades did not blend as well as I thought. They were really patchy. Then she did Celestial Storm towards the end of last year, and it looked so beautiful, and the color story was so appealing to me. But I think I saw Annette didn't give it a very good review, and it was the same stuff that I didn't like about Rustic Glam. So I passed on Celestial Storm and now she did the Latte 2. And I'm just like so tempted by those like fun shades. I saw Andrea Matiliano got her Trend Mood box. And the blue looks so bright. But it's like, again, it's pastel shades. So it doesn't matter how much I want it. It's still going to look like shit on me. I can maybe see myself putting that teal in like an inner corner and then doing like a neutral look, but we talked about it in the Half Cousins podcast and I said like everyone was like swooning over it, which is valid, but I was like, guys, like I don't know what to do with that palette because the mats, like the four mats in the corner, like you can't really, like I don't really love to do a colorful crease with a neutral lid like I really wish she had done a bright blue shade in the palette a shimmer shade to co to coordinate with those colors she threw in so I also feel like it reminds me of the thirsty palette I really really do I think the thirsty palette was a little bit more vibrant but especially now that I've seen the the latte palette on video it really reminds me of the thirsty palette I think if you have the thirsty palette you can definitely skip the latte palette because they're definitely dupes I I feel like so you guys can come for me in the comments if you want but that's my that's my story and I'm sticking to it the next palette I'm gonna anti haul is the Suva Beauty Hyper Color Palette, which is $35. Now this is a very new release. I think it came out today, the day I'm filming this video. And Suva Beauty is a brand that I am always rooting for, but uh, it's like such a miss for me. I bought their Cupcakes and Monsters palette. And I bought their Block Party palette. Like, I bought a bunch of Suva Beauty. I also have their Hydra liners, but their eyeshadow palettes just do not... They just don't work for me. I don't like the formula. I really wanted her... Um, she did, like, a red and gold palette, which was really beautiful. And I love Suva because it's brown girl magic. Like, the owner is Indian, Fijian, and she's so nice. Like... 
I follow her on Instagram and like we actually have conversations back and forth so like I really want them to like make a formula that I like but it's like almost like just it's almost there but it's really not my vibe and so again it's like a, a brand that I want to support by like sharing and liking their posts and like doing the best I can but I just don't like the formula and I just have to stop buying from them but they're coming out with this new palette and it's half matte and then there's like four toppers and I feel like yeah it's like this cool concept for mainstream because Suva is available at Morphe stores but I feel like the toppers yeah they're cool but I have like the chameleon shadows and I have the sugar drop collection by Davina so even like the indie brands it's like they've already like they've already done it like it's not revolutionary brand new you know so I'm really not tempted to buy it and it's also like glow in the dark and I think like if you are like a frequenter of music festivals and you live that rave party life like I would get that you would need a palette that's glow in the dark but that's like really not my life so I am passing on that palette the next palette or the pa next palettes, I should say, I'm anti-hauling, are the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadows. There's eight of them, and they are $3 each. So I've talked about this before as well. e.l.f. is one of those brands that is so dangerous because $3 sounds like a steal, right? Like $3, what's that? Like, that's nothing. And so I just... And they've stepped up their marketing. Like, their photos are getting better, and... Amy loves makeup, bought the green <laughs> quad and she did like a look with it and then I was just like, I found myself like adding it into my Alta card and taking it out and adding it and taking it out and I was like, Karen, it's Juicy Olive, like stop it. You have the Give Me Glow Juicy Olive palette. It doesn't matter that it's $3 and you have a 20% off coupon at Alta. You're not going to buy another green palette. Like you literally don't need those shades. So it's very difficult for me to say no to a green eyeshadow palette especially at that price point but I've tried elf before and it's never blown my mind and even that three dollars it adds up I would probably end up spending like at least 20 bucks on the elf website because I'll be like oh let me try this blush and let me you know they have a lot of new products that I haven't tried yet so I can't even go there, so I'm not gonna buy anything from that little collection. Um, so that's why I'm anti-hauling that particular palette set. So the next palette I'm anti-hauling is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette. Now, I'm not even tempted by this palette, to be very honest with you guys. I do have a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette that I really like. I have shown it in some videos and you guys have recognized it. I don't know. I think they sell it on Beautylish, but I don't know if it's available anywhere else. And it's super cute. Quality is great. I would definitely recommend it. It's a grown woman palette. Like, it's not going to look like this on your eyes, but it's going to be everyday, beautiful, sultry, sexy eyeshadow looks. I love it for that. So... I don't doubt that this palette is decent quality, but $75 and that color story has been done. Like, you can get that palette from ColourPop and I don't know, I just feel like $75 for, for Auntie Charlotte is too much, which is crazy because I buy like the Pat McGrath palettes and Auntie Pat's been slacking too, but I don't know, I just don't find Charlotte Tilbury's brand to be very tan girl friendly and so it's very easy for me to pass on her and she's also on my no buy list of 2020 because I bought like some of her blushes last year, I bought the Pillow Talk quad, again not tan girl friendly, I'm pretty sure I'm going to declutter the blushes, I just need to film that video, my blush drawer is a mess so I really 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 want to maybe this weekend sit down and film a bronzer declutter or blush declutter I already decluttered my highlighters you guys just haven't seen that video yet I pre-filmed it for vlogmas and I never ended up using it so it will be coming sometime soon on my channel it's kind of an old video I think I still have oh I'm not on the camera but yeah it was from like November or October of 2019 um, I've been holding on to it but I basically want to pare down everything so it all fits in one drawer because it's so hard to go through your face palettes and your face products and your face powders so 
that is my goal for 2020 is to just have less. So I'm very excited for that. And therefore, just no pillow talk eyeshadow palette. We're good. The next palette, I don't have any problem anti-hauling this. I think this palette is hideous. I'm sorry if you like it, but I think it's so gross. It's the Pinky Rose Stormy Palette for $27. I believe this is a Pinky Rose and what is the Forever 21 store called? Riley Rose exclusive. Oh, so cute. Both names end in rose. Like... Um, but yeah, I hate the pan shape. I hate that they're lightning bolts. That drives me crazy. I don't know why. It's like, it's such a stupid idea. Like the stormy palette with the lightning bolts. Like, are those colors supposed to correlate to a storm? Because I don't really see it. I feel like it's a bunch of primary shades and a bunch of shimmer shades. And I don't really love Pinky Rose's, like, quality. So definitely anti-hauling that. So the next thing I'm anti-hauling is... Um, I don't know if I can actually anti-haul this because it's the Makeup Geek Matrix system where they did the big palettes and they're like $125 or something. So in to be completely transparent, I did place a Makeup Geek order <laughs> because I'm a clown and I follow Indie Makeup Spotlight and my friend Amy made me do it. I'm going to blame this one on Amy, okay? Amy, if you're watching this. This is all your fault, but um, she had posted on Indie Makeup Spotlight when the rebrand went live, and so I was like, oh, let me just go take a peek, let me look and see, and so I went on the website, and lo and behold, not only did they have those two big Matrix palettes, they had like curated nine pan palettes, and I was like, ooh, okay, and then it like all came flooding back, like the emotions, the love for Makeup Geek, like, I wasn't like hardcore makeup geek, but I still have a palette full of her neutrals and I actually wore the Manny palette on my wedding day because I loved that palette. I still have it. It's like in my makeup like memory box because I won't put it on my eyes. It's kind of, it's not that old. I could probably use it still, but I'm just going to save that for memories. But yeah, I, oh my gosh, I can't believe, I can't believe um, that they had all these little curated palettes and then it was just like a nosedive there. Um, but she had some beautiful like nine pan palettes. So I bought one of those and then I did actually buy a quad as well because the quad had this like green eyeshadow and I couldn't find it as a single and I couldn't find it in the nine pans. So I bought the little quad too, which the little quad kind of looks like this Midas Cosmetics quad I just bought, which is like just far enough out of my reach that I can't show it to you uh but it's it's such a beautiful green I'm kind of hoping it's like this green on the outer part of my eye we'll see I'm excited but those big matrix systems like nobody needs those I feel like people are just buying them to review them and like the diehard Marlena fans I feel like my brush is so bright like I don't know. Do I look like a clown? I'm sorry if I look like a clown. I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder. I'm like, God, you look like a Cheeto. Anyway, so I feel like everyone's buying the Matrix sets for review and I hope that people make their money back on those purchases because like the, the neutral one is like really boring and a lot of those shades I'm pretty sure we all own because like she bought back a lot of her popular shades which like I don't blame her but I don't know I'm interested to see what people that paid money for them actually think because I think that'll be really interesting. The next palette I am anti-hauling is the Ofra Glitch eyeshadow palette for $29. Again this is one of those palettes that I should do a video called Palettes I Think Are Ugly because this palette I just genuinely think is ugly. It's like a really bad 90s throwback palette. It just makes me think of like chokers and eyeliner and like silver eyeshadow. I don't know. I feel like it was really weird timing for Ofra. I also really hate the pressing that Ofra does. It's like very gaudy in the highlighters, but then seeing it in a smaller pan like that is even more. I just feel like that palette could have been like this big. They didn't have to make such a big deal out of it. Like they could have made it smaller, made it like 20 bucks. Like that did not need to be a $30 palette. So anti-hauling that. Another palette I'm anti-hauling is the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette for $13.99. Now, I actually saw this one in person, 
And a long, long time ago, I used to get influencer boxes and they sent me like the Maybelline Gold, the little gold palette. And I hated it. It was awful. The quality was really shit. And so just for that reason, I think avoid it. Like you don't need to spend $13.99 on a drugstore palette when you can get a ColourPop amazing coconut palette, which is full of neutrals for $12 or the brown sugar palette or like a billion other palettes they make. If you can't get on their site, go on Ulta. You can use the $3 off a of $15 purchase and then get the palette for just as cheap as this Maybelline one. So for all of those reasons, it's getting anti-hauled. So another BH one I wanna talk about is the BH Digital Future 16 shade palette for $12. Now, BH has been doing this really cute series of like really teeny tiny palettes with a lot of colors and they, I think most people can't tell how small they are based off of the PR or like the marketing images. So be aware they're really tiny. Like I think this is about how big they are and I think it's a cute idea, but I feel like BH did so many palettes that look just like this. Um, like there's one for Ulta and then there's a different one on the BH website, but they all have like a very similar color story. And this one also reminds me a little bit of the Amrezi palette, I believe, because it has like that pink and that blue. So I definitely don't need it. I've already explained my very like fragile relationship with the brand. So I'm not drawn to it, but I'm just telling you guys, like don't get sucked into BH like I did because it's just like buy like one but don't, don't, don't go down the like, gotta catch them all, Pikachu, BH situation. Like it's, it's not good. So the next palettes I want to anti-haul is the Fenty Beauty Snap palettes. Now these ones definitely caught my eye, but you know how Samantha March talks about like, does it make me do a double take? They didn't make me do a double take. And I definitely found myself trying to convince myself like, okay, but maybe you should get like the, the pastel one. And I was like, no, it's ugly. I don't like the pastels she chose. I was like, maybe I should get the neutral one. I'm like, no, I don't need another neutral palette. And then I was like, maybe I should get the smoky one. And I'm like, no, I don't like the smoky eyeshadows. Like I don't like cool tone eyeshadows. So then I was like, maybe I should get the cadet one because it has that cool green shade and that cool mustard shade. I'm like, that's basically the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, <clears throat> What is that palette called? The green one. Totally blanking on the name of the palette, but you guys know the grungy ABH palette has all of those shades and I haven't even filmed a video with it on my channel yet. So why the fuck would I need to buy the snap palettes? There are 25 bucks a piece. That's not even cheap. What is that freaking palette called? The green one. So I bought that at like Marshall's and it was like 20 bucks. So I basically got more shades, better formula, or at least a formula I'm familiar with instead of trying these Fenty palettes. So very easy for me to finally say no. Like this is the behavior I need to identify in myself is like, why are you trying to convince yourself to buy something you didn't want? Like that's stupid. And like everyone's already reviewed it. Like the tide has passed. I don't need it. I'm not gonna buy it. The next palette is the North, <laughs> I was gonna say the North Dakota Mini Glam Palette. The Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette, 25 bucks. So this past year, 2019, I did go down the mini palette rabbit hole. So I bought the Tropic Palette because I thought it was adorable. Then I bought the Mini Gold Palette because it's adorable. And then I bought the uh, Mini Nude Palette because my friend Teresa is dead, raves about that palette. And then we were in New York City and Natasha Denona was having a meetup at the Sephora in Times Square and you had to buy something Natasha Denona to meet Natasha Denona. So of course I bought the $25 palette. Like, do I look stupid? <laughs> and so she did sign it for me. Guess what? I haven't even used my mini palette yet. So I need to do that. I can see it from where I'm sitting. I haven't filmed it. I, I want to use it. I want to do like a ranking my little mini collection for you guys. And why would I buy another one? Like, I think the mini glam is adorable. I will, I could see myself buying it. Let's be real here. But I don't need to buy it. I have the Biba palette. I don't even use that 
on a daily basis, let alone a monthly basis. If I can use that once a year, I'll be happy. So even though it's adorable and I would recommend it to you guys because Natasha Denona makes bomb eyeshadow and it's a great price point to try out her stuff, I don't need it, so I'm not gonna buy it. Um, but if you want it, I think you should. It's a great product, I'm sure of it, because I like her other mini palettes. So the next palette I'm anti holly is the Tarte Spicy Betch Palette for $24. Now, I did buy the Icy Betch Palette. Did you see a video on my channel? Hmm, let's take a second to think about that. No, I don't think I did. I think I swatched it because Sydney Grace did a dupe of the Icy Betch Palette when they first did the April Fool's joke and then they never actually released it. Um, and I bought that set and then I bought the Tarte one and I did like comparison swatches. I think I did that on Instagram though. I don't even think that made it to YouTube. I don't remember. Anyway, I didn't use the Icy Betch. It was pretty decent formula wise and I think it was really a great price point for Tarte. It was you know, it was a good thing for Tarte to do some color, something different for them. But this spicy bitch, I'm actually shocked people are purchasing it. Like, you guys, you already have those colors. Like, you cannot tell me that you don't have a warm tone matte eyeshadow palette. And, okay, this is really random, but I just got this in the mail. Isn't it adorable? I got this for five bucks from Bobble Bar, and it's like a little bracelet with little chili peppers on it. Um, cause I wanted free shipping and I had to spend like a certain amount of money, um, because I bought these really bomb earrings, which you'll see in a different video. But anyway, if you want like something covered in peppers cause you like spicy food, just buy this bracelet. It's only $5 and it's adorable and you can like layer it and stuff versus this palette that we already all have. And I mean, Tarte's not even the best formula to buy a palette like that. Like if you want shades like that. Buy the It's All Good palette. I was trying to reach for it, but I have like 800 other palettes on top of it, so I can't do that right now, but yeah, no. No no to tart spicy bitch, guys. I'm sorry. The next thing I'm into hauling is more products from Charlotte Tilbury. Oh my gosh. So Charlotte Tilbury came out with two quads. The pictures look stunning. I actually contemplated buying $53 quads, so times two, over $100, ridiculous, because one was like, again, the mauve, not the mauve, one was like the grungy greens, and then the other one had like a really plummy purple in it, and I was like, Karen, look at the pillow talk quad that you never use, look at the other palette you never use, look at all these other dusty, busty things you bought from Charlotte Tilbury this year, and tell me you want those quads. And then I was like, okay, I don't want them. So I didn't get them, but I do think they're really beautiful. I have those color stories, those colorways. I can dupe all of that in my collection already, so I'm just gonna admire them from a distance. But yeah, those color stories definitely did get me. I just don't have a spare $100 to spend on like eight eyeshadows. That's ridiculous. So passing on that. And boy, this video is long. The last palette that I have anti hauling is the BH Cosmetics Crystal Zodiac Palette. It looks like it's an Ulta exclusive for right now and it does retail for $27. Now this one is tough because I have the first two. So the completionist in me is like, get the palette, get the palette do a review, post it online, you're gonna get so many views. No, no I'm not. Like, that palette, like what, came out like a month ago at this point, like nobody's gonna watch my dusty video on it. Like, the tide has come, the time has come, and it has gone, like it's over, right? So I can't get it really for review because I'm not gonna see a return on investment. I know that's like a really boring way to talk about eyeshadow palettes, but I've tried to explain it in the comments and nobody, like, trust me, I'm not complaining. Nobody has been, like, mean to me about this no buy, low buy situation. Everyone has been so supportive and it means so much to me because, like I said in my intro, I doubt myself. So, like, know that this is hard for me, but I can stop buying eyeshadow today and not need any more eyeshadow palettes. Like, so now I'm at the point where I need to make smart purchases for my channel and things that are gonna help my channel grow, things that are, you know, gonna boost me in the algorithm or whatever. So, um, yeah, I just, I just like, I already have all the palettes I love. 
I'll be okay. So that's why I'm like doing four palettes. That's why I'm trying to buy things that you guys are probably interested in and not just buy things to buy things. That's why I'm cutting down on how many palettes I'm buying. So yeah, I went through the whole thing in my head. I really want this palette, but again, never gonna use it. And I'm not gonna end up reviewing it. It's just gonna sit there. It's just gonna like wilt and wither and die, just like my other PH palette. So yeah. It's cute. I think it's a cool idea. I love that they did another one. I love that it's primary colors. Like, those mattes in the original Zodiac are so good. So I don't doubt that the ones in this one are really good too. But I don't need it. And I'm not going to buy it. So I'm going to stay strong. So that is everything for this anti-haul, guys. I hope you like this video. Let me know down in the comments if you think I should make this like a monthly thing on my channel. That's kind of what I'm thinking of doing is just picking out eyeshadow palettes. That kind of came out in the month of, like for example, the next one will be February and I'll probably film it at the end of March. And so just kind of look at some palettes that I really, really wanted in that month and then just anti-haul it and it's all in good fun. Please don't take anything I said personally. Like I said, this is for me. This no buy, this low buy is for myself because I bought too much. I hope I kind of gave you guys more detail. Sometimes I feel like I try to keep things short and sweet and then I like, forget a lot of information so hopefully I explain my no buy and low buy a little bit more to you guys as well and if you guys see any new makeup releases that you think I should feature in this video because like I said I'm thinking I should do this as a series tag me on Instagram I would love that and I'm also gonna keep doing will I buy videos so it's just fun content I know you guys like hearing me talk about makeup so it's just a fun way to talk about some stuff help you guys because I know a lot of you are trying to reduce your spending as well and honestly like I've had some moments where I've lost it like I am not supposed to be buying foundation but you guys know I love Milani so I did buy the screen queen foundation you know so I'm, I'm struggling too but watching videos like this watching my low buy no buy intro video again really helps me stay strong really helps me focus hearing myself you know, giving you guys reasons why I need to stop buying as much as I did really helps me reframe my mental state. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video soon.